And we're back. Another outstanding episode of the Square Table Degenerates Podcast. <laughs> we drop the podcast later. We're not, not really a podcast because I'm only on YouTube. But today we welcome current New York Jets safety and former Cleveland Brown Javante Moffat to the show. How are you today, sir? I'm good. How about you? I'm living, man. I'm living. Happy I day. hear you, man. It's, uh, it was hey, nice. Hey, it's fine. Hey, it was hey, like, hey, man, it was like 70 degrees, and I went out to the park, and it's been a while since I did that. So, oh, yeah. I, I, I bet y'all enjoyed it up there. I'm in Tennessee, so the weather's been pretty good. Okay, so that answers my first question. You were – you're now still out. You're still in Tennessee. So the internet says you were born in Union City, Tennessee. That's correct? Yes, sir. I was born in Union City, Tennessee. Uh, ended up moving – uh, the Buffalo, New York, for a couple years, and eventually making my way back to the UNC, so where I finished up high school. So yeah. Okay. What uh, at the time? What brought your family to Buffalo? Was it uh, your dad's work or somebody uh, job? Uh, or something? We well, we were having like some uh, long story short, just like some family trouble, and it was kind of just like you know a, a start over. We had some family in Buffalo, moved there, uh, ended up having some trouble in Buffalo, and our family kind of divorced and split up and. I eventually came together in the, in the long run, so right, that worked good. out for the best. And now going to Buffalo, man, how was that? Was that the first time you really saw snow, or what? Uh, oh yeah, for time? sure. I mean, it was cold as shit, man. First time seeing <laughs> snow. Uh, I still remember going outside and pretty much freezing my ass off just because I was trying to play in it so much. But um, first incident with snow is, you know, you play in snow, they tell you not to go put hot water in your hands. That's the first thing you do as a kid. So lesson learned early, you know. When we were growing up, we used to, there was this movie called, you probably, you might have seen it called Christmas Story. And there's a scene in the movie where the kid sticks his tongue to a pole. And I like that. And when you're growing up, like, does, does this work? Does this work? You always want to do yeah. it. But if you do it too long, it, half your tongue falls off. And it's great. <laughs> so, so I looked up Union City and it's kind of like right smack by Illinois, Kentucky, Missouri. Yeah, right there. Right on the borderline. Yeah, right it's like. Is this like Mark Twain, Mark Twain country and like young Abe Lincoln, that kind of stuff? Like, what, what's the area? Yeah, like it's, it's just like a, it's a small city. Uh, college is near it is uh, UT Martin, um, University of Tennessee at Martin. But it's a small city, man. Not not that many people there as far as population-wise, but I mean, it's a tight-knit city overall. That's good. Now, did, did you what, what kind of non-football stuff did you do growing up? Like, what kind of hobbies did you do? Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I played basketball and baseball. Um I did I did those all through uh, high school, um, so that was kind of my thing. I was kind of always full with you know I was a three sport athlete, so I was always kind of busy, nonstop, you know, with uh, sports. Okay, now what uh, what point did you realize you were pretty good at football? Like coming up, was there a point where like, okay, actually? So uh, I, yeah, I was in Buffalo, and um, I was in Buffalo, and I was a basketball kind of basketball star actually before leaving to go to Buffalo and. In Buffalo, I was a basketball star. So coming back down to Tennessee, I didn't play uh, football. I just played basketball and baseball. And I eventually, um, you know, gave it a shot going into my sophomore year. And my junior my junior, and senior year is kind of where I kind of took off with it. All right. Now, growing up, the, the cities I was trying to track between, you, you were kind of like equidistant between like Nashville and, and St. Louis. Now, who did you, did you have a pro team coming up, pro NFL team coming up? If I did, I would say Bills Mafia when I was in Buffalo. I mean, they take pride in that shit. It's crazy up there. Dude, it's I mean, it's, it's almost it's like Cleveland, you know, like those those type of cities. You know, they they take a lot of pride in in their sports, you know, and and the Bills are you know are pretty well known for that as well as well as like the Browns are. Yeah, the Buffalo the Buffalo games are wild, man. I, we had a incident back in uh, <laughs> 14, 2014, maybe it was fifteen. I have to. Remember it. I didn't remember much of it, but all I know is uh, I drank somebody's beer I shouldn't have. And <laughs> yeah, no, they crazy with them, man. They want to stop me. Well, they should have. I mean, I, I was, I was, I was drunk and I was drinking their beer. They should have probably I kicked my ass, but uh, yeah. I got good friends though, so it's good. <laughs> now, what? Uh, I looked up the high school. It's strangely enough called Union City High School. Now, is this this is a small. This is a pretty small high school. Now, what? Uh, how big was your high school? What? Uh, what kind of? Uh, is it one of the things like Maybe every like? High you know what's going on? Yeah, everybody knew each other. Uh, that was – so uh, in Buffalo, I actually went to three high schools. Um, like, those are all completely different. You know, one was one was um, like a, a, a school you would see on TV, you know, a lot of population. And the other one was all-boys school. So uh, going back to Union City was just – I mean, it was a school that everybody knew each other from, you know, freshman class to, to senior. It wasn't a lot of – you know, a lot of people overall. But um, 
more of a sports school, academic school overall. But yeah, so that's kind of the, the, the gist on that. Okay. Now, did uh, so you you see you were a sophomore? And you went back to Union City. Uh, going into my yeah sophomore year, sir. Okay, so were you? Uh, did you play football when you got back? Did you play in Buffalo, or you only played when you got back to Union City? No, I, I pretty much only played when I got back to Union City. It was too cold in Buffalo when I was indoor, <laughs> indoor baseball, all that spring baseball. I was just I kept it, kept it warm, warm on. It is so cold up here, man. People, you, you don't realize they don't understand. Like, they really don't understand. It's, it's so cold up here some days, man. That's why everybody's depressed. I mean, it's even worse in places like Alaska, but in Minnesota, stuff like that, North Dakota, exactly. Exactly. Oh my goodness! It's no just, sunshine, not yeah, enough. And even now, it's just you know it was nice early week. Now, now it's raining. Okay, there goes yeah. the weekend because everything's gonna be all wet. You can't go to the park. Okay? Yeah, it's just constant over and over, man. But uh, did you, you know when you came back to Union City? Did you uh, like back then? We always played you know both <clears> sides, play offense and defense. Did you play offense and defense? Or what positions did you? Oh play yeah, b- both. I um did a pretty much did everything. You know, we we ran a, a triple option, so I was you know either running back, receiver, backup quarterback, whatever it was, and. Uh, I played corner growing up, so that's kind of what I went to uh, into college for playing corner. So okay. eventually turned into a safety wing. Uh, Kevin Byer left. Okay. What was your guys' uh, mascot in UC? Uh, tornadoes. It was tornadoes. A tornado. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty slick, actually. That's no, uncancelable. No. There, you can't get yeah. rid of the tornadoes. Well, <laughs> I guess theoretically, if a tornado like destroyed a nearby village, you'd probably be like, you can't have that no more. But who knows? <laughs> Oh, 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 oh! Somebody said hi to whiskey. I thought they were about to ask what your favorite whiskey is. What? Oh, do you do you drink it all? Or are you? Uh... Um, I'm, I'm a drinker, man. I'm a big big tequila guy. I love, love Jack Daniels. Um, you know, especially being from Tennessee, Jack Daniels is really popular. So, okay. um, I love me a Jack and Coke. I'm actually gonna grab me something as soon as I get off with you. So you can grab one off if you want. I'm not. The, I'm not picky. Yeah. Uh, for that. Let's see here. Um. So what was uh? Did you, you did you in high school? Did you play in the at Union City? You came back. Did you play baseball and basketball again, or did you just? Try oh to yeah, so uh, so I I came here just now strictly playing basketball and uh, going into a spring. I want to say the the season, the spring. I want to say of, of my sophomore year. Um, the coach was talking to me, and I ended up you know going out there and you know playing at corner and kind of I want to say making a big statement, but it was like I could play and kind of went from there you know um and eventually you know focusing more on football than i did basketball in the, in the long run now were you recruited out of high school for basketball or just uh just football uh, ba- uh football and baseball so the in the two schools that gave me a chance to play football and, and baseball in the long run were the ones that i ultimately took you know took to the long run and that's kind of how i went about it all right, so that's what that's what made you picked uh, Middle Tennessee State. You got to play both baseball and football. Yeah, I did until that that was the goal. So I got there and uh, we have a we had a safety at the time, Kevin Byer, he plays for the Titans. Uh, you know, well known safety in the league, and he ended up leaving. So I went from corner. We had a stacked corner room, and I ended up going from corner to safety. So now it's like, oh shit, I got to learn a new position. So, you know, a lot of a lot of changes and stuff going on, and I had to sit you know set that to the side and, and focus more on football from then on out. Okay, now uh, when you went down to Middle Tennessee State, did you live on campus or were you off campus? I was on campus first year, and then the next three, you know, you do you do everything right, and they let you go do whatever you want to do. So that's the good <laughs> thing about you know being in school here. It's a big, pretty big school. And right, were you on the meal plan at first, or did they uh, did you find a way to like get a part time job? I mean, back then it was a little different than it is now. What, oh what yeah, so so uh, it was more of like we had a meal plan, you know, um, Coach Stock. Um, Rick Stock still, you know, the head coach for MT. Actually, um, I think at one point he was getting a raise, and he ended up, you know, this is where players started getting like stipends and stuff like that. So he ended up like saying, "I don't want the raise, you know, give it to my players." And that's kind of how it started, you know. Um, at one point we was getting like you know six, seven hundred a month, and um, you know rent was paid for and all that stuff, so it was good. But in the summer, you know, they found us jobs, so moving companies, whatever. If, if you wanted to do that, so um, I pretty much did that in my in my time where I was, wasn't as busy. Now, how far is Middle Tennessee State from Nashville? Like three and a half hours. So, oh, that's, still, I mean, that's, a, that's a hefty drive there. Okay. okay. Yeah, so, I, I mean, I never go home. Uh, Tennessee, Middle Tennessee was where I was, I mean, all four years. I probably went home maybe once, maybe twice. So. Oh, not home. I was in Nashville, like uh, the city of Nashville. How, how, uh, oh, oh, the- from, oh, from Nashville. Oh, like 30 minutes, 
maybe. Okay, so were you going? Were you going up there at, during the weekends? Is that like the prime spot? Like, yeah, hey, that, that's where people go. You know, it's, it's a lot of colleges. You know, middle. You got um Vandy, um, TSU, Lipscomb. It, it's just it's so many colleges in that area that um you go there and you can have a good time anytime. You know. Now, why are people? Uh, this is a recent thing. I remember this back in the nineties, early two thousands. Why are people so recently obsessed with Nashville? What's the deal with Nashville? Man, that's crazy. It's, it's crazy you say that because the population here is growing nonstop. And uh, like just looking at real estate uh, a couple months ago, I mean, it's it's like outrageous here. A lot of people aren't even who have jobs in Nashville are staying like so far out of the city because of the, the, the real estate is so high right now. So um, I don't really know what the attraction is, but it's affecting Nashville and Murfreesboro, which is where I'm currently at training. So um, it's crazy. I don't know what the attraction is, honestly. Oh, so the so the real estate crunch. I mean, it's hitting everybody. I mean, houses prices have doubled, I think. Like, so it's even bleeding down all the way to Murfreesboro. Then, huh? It's, uh, yeah, it's crazy. Oh, jeez. Now, what? Uh, let's see here. What were some of more of your memorable college football moments that you uh, that you had that stick out your mind? Can't hear you. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah. You're good. So, yeah, we were a mid-major school. So, we was at school. We played. We scheduled four SEC teams a year or whatever. And um, I would say, you know, knocking off uh, Mizzou my, my sophomore year was a big win. Um, my best game of my career was probably my senior year. I had, like, two picks, 15 tackles, and a forced fumble. So, that was, like, one of my most memorable games, I would say, against Marshall. Um, but other than that, I mean, just enjoying the victories. I mean, you know, not too much short of nothing. Okay, now what uh, is, did you have to take a medical red shirt year off? And what yeah, happened? Yeah, so uh, so my I, I had tore my labrum my sophomore year. Well, yeah, my sophomore year, so tore my labrum. Um, but I played the whole year, and as I kept playing, I started using my right shoulder, you know, so um, I ended up tearing that shoulder. So I tore both of my shoulders to finish the year, and um. Yeah, so the next year they came up with the new red shirt rule. Like, you can play four games and sit out the next year if you want to. It's the rest of the year. You can play any four games. So that following year, uh, the head coach picked the four games he wanted me to play in against, you know, some conference, you know, opponents. I played them four games and sat out the rest of the year and came back my last year healthy. So it was a good thing that I was, you know, as a true freshman, I still had my red shirt, you know, if I got hurt later on, so. Now, what did you do with, after you did the four games? What did you do? Just kind of still work Oh, they, out? They, they had me, like, on a coaching staff and kind of had a headset calling plays and signals to the back, back end safeties and corners. Oh, okay. Just like a back end assistant. Okay. Yeah, no doubt. Now, I've never – I looked up graduates of your school, and several of them have passed away. My famous graduates are talking. Al Gore Sr. is no longer with us. But yeah. have you ever met George Clinton or former Cleveland Browns quarterback Kelly Holcomb? No, I haven't. Hold up. Kelly, no, I haven't. No, I haven't. I haven't. Okay. Not at all. I've heard about him, but I haven't. But yeah, what's crazy? Old, you're, 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 you're a little, yeah, little bit young to remember the 2001 Browns. But back in 01, it was 01. Yeah, the Browns. Well, the Browns came back in 99, and then in 01, was the first playoff run because Devil Man Lerner was passing away. So they loaded up the team with a lot of talent. They got a lot of free agents that year. Okay. And, and Tim McCouch got injured and they ended up putting Kelly Holcomb into a playoff game. And he ended up, uh, it was a really good game against the Steelers. But we ended up losing by like one touch. It was really close at the end. But he, that, that, I always remember the middle, middle Tennessee State was I always remember for Kelly Holcomb went there. And when I played NCAA, I think it was 04, 05, my buddy used to play with the, play with the, because they had the, the mascots had the big heads. It was really funny seeing the – Oh, the Raiders, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, the Raiders. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so. No doubt. Uh, actually, our corners coach, he played here as well. So, um, that was kind of a coincidence. Brendan Lynch, he uh, played at Middle Tennessee State. He's the corners coach for the Browns as well. So, Oh, nice. Now, at what point did you think you were going to be able to play in the NFL? Uh, probably, probably my junior year, going into my junior year. Um, I had a lot of buzz. Um I was leading. I was leading the nation. I was top in tackles and stuff like that. So um, that's what. I, that's kind of what I became known for um, was finding the ball. Uh, and you know, when I took that red shirt, yeah, that was part. Of it. Can't hear you again. Oh yes, can you hear me oh, now? You go. Good. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. So uh, when I took that red shirt, yeah, that was kind of, kind of the big reason because I wanted to um, finish on a good note going into the league. So I took that year off and. And I wanted to have a good performance for my, for my final year. So, now was the combine already going to happen, and then it was canceled because I can't remember in 2020. Did was there? Did we so, even have a combine that year? Oh so yeah. So that year I had. I ended up 
getting into, um, playing into the All Star game, the NFL PA in Cali, which was, I mean, that was fun as hell. I mean, it was probably one of the best games. And then um, end up missing the combine, and then I end up missing pro day. Like, like I'm gonna say four days before my pro day was like, you know, they shut the world down, so it kind of fucked me in the long run. But I mean, it, it's it's where it worked out, you know, it worked out. You know, no numbers, whatever. I'm just here. That's how I look at. It. I'm just here. Oh yeah, I mean, you couldn't. Nobody in the world could have predicted that and everything that went down. But I mean, it was. Yeah. Uh, now, what were you doing during the lockdown when you got the call from Browns and they said they wanted to sign you? Were you just like pumping iron and your cell phone got a text? How, how were how you? Oh yeah, so so um, towards the like six six round um six round day three, they start calling and you get a lot of teams that call and um. Actually, when Stavansky called me, and that was the first head coach to call me. So it was like, okay, the head coach calling him. I mean, this is where I'm going. It's kind of simple, you know. Uh, I kind of X'd out of the other teams and went from there. Okay. We got a question from uh, Andrew Burlisle. It says, do you talk to anyone in the Browns today? Oh, yeah, every day. Uh, AJ, AJ Green's still there. I talked to Denzel. Spent went on a couple trips with Denzel already. So uh, JJ, Anthony Walker, uh, Grant Delpit, DPJ. Um and Greg Newsom. That's kind of like my little my little gang there. So nice. um I'm always in contact with them guys. Nice. Now, did you guys uh, what did you guys do for training camp? I mean, did you did you have a little area in your 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 yard? You just kind of had set up with a camera. I mean, what did you what, what was remote? Oh, you mean before? going into my rookie year, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we were just and yeah, like kind of like how we are now on Zoom. Just just kind of how you met everybody. It's kind of how you learned the plays and. When you got there, you hit the ground full running, which was a different experience, you know, from learning the shit and sitting down all day in, in air conditioning. So, now did you get, did you get, I mean, because obviously everybody was, you know, adjusted to the remote environment. Was there a point where you're like, okay, if I got to go to one more Zoom meeting, I'm just going to be like, oh, yeah, man, we got to that point a lot. We got to that point a lot, especially being rookies. We had a little bit more, you know, we had more Zoom meetings than what the average uh, player would have, you know, who was a veteran. So, um, it definitely started wearing tear on us, but you knew it was it was something that we needed. Now, how were the testing procedures in 2020? Did uh, did he ever get tiresome? I, I mean, it's been I know it sounds weird, but it's been it feels like it's 15 years ago. But like, were they sticking things up your nose every day before you came in the building? I mean, what was that? Oh, yeah, like? I mean, so I would say I probably never drove that much just to be. I mean, just to go to the facility. Um, we would we had like a time every day where it was between like you know six or eight. Uh, before we had to actually be there for a meeting, we have to test and we have to wait 45 minutes to test for the test to come back. So we did it every day, seven days a week. And it was a pain in the ass. I mean, you get an off day and you still got to go up there to get tested and go right back home. So it's kind of like you never got to sleep in. So that that was the thing. Um, it was a pain in the ass. But, you know, when the COVID shots came, they, they allowed us to not be tested. You know, a lot of people ran to go do that first. So. Now, now, back in 2020, when you were coming off the roster, did you have to quarantine each time, or were you just – if you just tested every day, it was just a smooth transition regardless? Uh, you talking about my first year? Yeah, yeah, 2020. Oh, yeah, yeah, you had – you. it was – it was uh, – um, it was tested every day. I mean, you got tested pretty much every day. Right. Um, last year, then they made the rules where, you know, you where you had your shots and you were able to do, you know, go out away games or – you know, not be tested, but like two times a week or something like that. But um, I'm glad that's all lifted and we can go back to kind of being normal. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, in 2021, how did it feel to finally get some solid game action? I, mean, I think you started the Raiders game, no? Yeah. Uh, it, no, yeah. So th that was actually pretty, pretty good experience. Um, a lot of preparation because it was like, oh, shit, you know. Oh, that's kind of how the league is, though. You know, you always got to be ready because you never know. But um, no, it, it was definitely a great experience. It was a good game. I feel like. You know, it was kind of a prove-it game to let people know I can play, and that's exactly what I did. I felt like I did what I needed to do and helped me in the long run. So, well, I think most people probably remember you from when Derek Carr was trying to run right on a third and goal and <laughs> yeah, came for a touchdown. He just leveled them like a yeah, man. Play was... tackle like you teach in school, man. What were you uh, – <clears throat> what was going through your head when you saw my – oh, my, I get my moment right here. I get to smash this guy right now. Oh, yeah, I mean – I've been a, I've been a tackler all my life, so it's the same shit. I mean, I mean it's the same thing. That's kind of how I viewed it, and and I just happened to be a quarterback, so it made it a little bit better. That was one of the I was at that game. I, I go to all the games, and that, that was one of the rougher losses on the year, man. I'm not gonna lie. I, I mean, man, that game right there. 
if we win that game, we we probably change the season a little bit differently, you know. Uh, we were we were absolutely deflated. Walker. Yeah, after that one, yeah, that that one that was the one for us. Because all all week, because if you guys don't remember, if you guys you know either you're not football fans, you remember last year's because you're trying to forget it. But last year going to, going to that Raiders game, we had there was rumors breaking every every two hours somebody else was out with COVID. Man, like, like, at least twenty out. about twenty players out the game. Oh yeah. man, and it was uh, it was just a rough season, man. Now, can we uh, can we talk about the Browns in general now? Obviously, over the past week, you know, there's been a lot of stuff going on with the Browns. We'll get to see that. Free agency is crazy. Crazy as shit. There's an elf in the room. We can talk about that here in a minute. But now, how is it dealing with the Browns front office and staff? Are they, like, abrasive at all? Uh, I mean, to me, they were they were a pretty good group of people as far as our, every, everybody that I came in, um, in touch with. So, I feel like from the coaches to the to the front office, everybody was first class. I mean, it was a great, a great environment. Now why are there so many leaks and rumors? There's no other team in the NFL gets it like this. The Browns, every, every day there's somebody. <laughs> I have no clue. Them. And it's like the rumors contradict the other rumors. I mean, like two days ago, they were like, oh, Deshaun Watson's picking out the Browns. He's not coming here. And, uh, you know, today, obviously, they broke. He's coming here. Now, I got I to gotta ask you a preface to the, the Watson question. Can I ask you about Baker now? Did I? Uh, there's rumors that he lost the locker room and all. Is any of this true, or they just make this stuff up? Where does this stuff even come from? In your opinion, I, I don't think he lost the locker room. I just feel like, uh, I feel like a lot of stuff with the media is is what they think, and they they put it out there, and and it kind of you know goes either left or right. You know, I don't, I don't think he lost the locker room. And most people know Baker wears his heart on his sleeve. Baker's a good guy. I mean, I, I don't think he lost anybody in the locker room when it was all said and done. Now, are you surprised at all that the Browns got Watson? I am, and I'm not. I mean, I I, I was waiting on somebody. Somebody had to get him. Uh, I honestly didn't think the Browns would get him after they came out with the statement that he wasn't interested. So, I mean, that's that shocked everybody, I bet. So, I mean, that's crazy, and that's good for them. I mean, that's good for him as well. I feel like, uh, you know, everything he's been through, especially uh, pleading not guilty. So, um, I feel like he deserved everything that's coming his way. Um as far as a success point. No, I do too. I mean, it's like people, what I, what, what, what does, what I don't appreciate about the whole situation is the incendiary language people use. I mean, the man, yeah, for sure. For sure. It's bad. Like, oh, the Browns are starting to, you know, rapist. And no, dude, like, yeah, just, no doubt. And then it's, it's crazy, you know, just something like that, you know, ruins his whole name, you know, and people don't look at all the endorsements he lost or, you know, he, he gets a, he gets a fully guaranteed contract, but you don't understand how much money he lost out on. So, uh, in the long run, you got to look at man. I mean, you you're messing with somebody's name and you know foundation. So, oh, he had a, he had a Beats contract, I think Nike, all that yeah, stuff. Nike, it's crazy. It's crazy. Oh, like, yeah, I, mean, I mean, who knows now? He may be, uh, you know, does good. There's uh, the beauty of America is there's always uh, the land of second chances. I mean, Michael Vick got another hundred million dollar contract. And no, that's true. Second chance, no doubt. It's beautiful, man. Now, how did you end up uh, signing with the New York Football Jets? Oh, they actually tried to come get me during the year. Um, after the um the Raiders game, um so after my first start, I had a lot of teams reach out, and um it was kind of like um, I was in a situation where I was comfortable where I was. I probably should have left uh, the first time, so um but I ended up staying, and um so when they when it came back around, the opportunity came and I left. So, all right, now what is a futures contract? It's just uh so with me, you know, I was a rookie uh rookie in my rookie contract, so it's just. Pretty much, uh, I'm I'm a be on, I'll be on the team. Just got to go through camp and all that stuff again, you know. Um, oh, okay. Make the team just like anybody else. So. Oh, so it's just kind of like uh, the inv- invite to spring training thing in baseball that you like. You you get a contract, you make the team kind of deal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no doubt. Okay, okay. Now, are, if you do make the team, let's assume you do make the team. Are you looking forward to living up in East Rutherford, New Jersey, in the New York area? Yeah, I mean, I am. As long as it's warm, then it gets like Cleveland. It's like, oh shit, you know, the snow about to hit way harder. So. Um. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is, man. I mean, I won't be too far from New York, so I get to experience that. So, um, I'm looking forward to it. Now, for something like that, do you? Uh, would you? I mean, New York's expensive as hell, man. I'm, I know that. Oh you yeah, for sure. Spe- especially with taxes and all that, man. It's gonna be crazy as hell. It's gonna be crazy. It kills you. I mean, the stadium's in New Jersey, but I mean, with something like that, would you? Got? I mean, where would? 
would you just like get an Airbnb? How I mean, you don't want to sign a lease and something like that. How do you? How do you? I mean, there, there, there's different ways to um to go about situations like that. A lot of players, some players do Airbnbs, uh, fully furnished. Some players, um, find an apartment that's fully furnished. But um, some teams even have places where players stay, you know, to help them out. So I'll see what their options are. Um, like for the Browns, I stayed in an apartment. I signed a lease. Um, I just did it for like six months. You know, a lot of players only stay in certain cities. You know. If they're in a city like Cleveland, you know, you want to go where it's warm. So uh, you probably stay there for six months and, you know, you find a six-month lease and they let you break it. So um, there's different ways to work around leases. They work with us, so it's all it's all good at the end of the day. When you when you had a lease in Cleveland, where were you staying at? Uh, first, first year I stayed downtown, and then that was COVID year. So I figured when COVID kind of, you know, slowed down and was going away, uh, downtown would be a lot more crowded. So I ended up going to Tremont, which Tremont was uh, the perfect spot. If I were – if I were to ever go back to the Browns, I'd definitely be in Tremont. Tremont's live, man. Tremont's yeah. there. Tremont used to be not Chill, like that. Low key. Chill and low key, man. No, it is. It is. It's it's uh it's got it because it was originally supposed to be like I think it was originally supposed to be like a college town because they got all streets named like Professor and Literary Jefferson and, and, and all that. Yeah, no doubt. And they, and it's uh and it's parking's an issue sometimes, man. At uh, Tremont's Tremont's boss area, man. I love Tremont. I haven't been down there in a minute. I yeah. went to uh the greenhouse, it's not like the greenhouse, the, the bar with the tree on it. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's been a minute. Been it's tree. I think it's, it's called Treehouse. Treehouse, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, good stuff. Now, when you go out to, have you met anybody from uh, any of the new Jets yet? Have you uh, hollered at him? You guys had meetings yet, or how's that work? Uh, no, not yet. Just the coaching staff. I went up there for uh, just to check out the place, and that's pretty much it. Um, other than you know the players that were on the Browns team, so I've met. So, um, that's about it. Okay. Now, is, is the training camp a big deal for you? I mean, or are you just kind of always working on I me? Mean, you're, you're a young guy. I mean, at this point. Yeah, no, nah, I'm always I'm always in my in grind mode. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's how I prepare. Everybody prepares different. So, uh, me, I got to work. I have to work hard for me to feel ready. So, that's just kind of how I go about things. All right. We got a question from Leprechaun TV. He says, do you like Edison's Pizza? Did you like Edison's Pizza? Oh, yeah. I went there a lot. That was, one, that was my favorite place in uh, Cleveland. Uh, I actually live, like, the street right over so i would walk down there 12 o'clock 11 o'clock grab a couple slices of pizza and walk back home nice now did you ever it's not trina did you ever have nunzios never oh dude nunzios was on it's on 40 it's on like 60th and lorraine but they uh they're open to like four. Oh, it's so good i mean it's greasy spoon pizza but man we used to get that it's it's, it's, they've been open forever but we used to you know because the big trick was you get the bars closed at 2 30 we guys get some eat just call nunzio and get half sheets and they just right to the house man it's great Love Nunzios, man. What other, that's actually a great question. What other uh, Cleveland's – did you go to the West Side Market a lot when you were uh, in here? Did you ever – Um, I went I went downtown to eat as much as I could. Um, I did a lot of Uber Eats, uh, DoorDash. So, um, I went uh, – I'm, try, I'm trying to think, man. Um, a lot of DoorDash. Harry Buffalo. Oh, I love – which 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 Harry Buffalo were you at? Um, downtown. Is it that's like one like near downtown, right? Or in Ohio City? Yeah, I'm trying to think because I always go to one in North Olmstead. I know there's one downtown. I'm trying to picture. Did you ever go to the Lincoln Lizard over on uh, at the Galleria? No, I never. Um, oh, okay, okay. Town Hall, the Town Hall a lot. Oh, no. oh yeah, yes, definitely Town um, Hall. Like, always went to like Morton's or uh, what's the other steakhouse downtown? Um, oh, Hyde Park. No, Shoe I can't maybe? think. Morton's and uh, Morton's, yeah, there's Morton's, Morton's Reds, 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 and there's one more I can't think of. It's the one. It's I can't think of. It. Um, but yeah, so I was yeah, I was kind of everywhere. I, I tried to eat as much places as I could. I was gonna go to Morton's once, but then I uh, we just realized that man, that's a lots a real expensive night out, and I think we just went down to the <laughs> down to the bar travelers down the street. <laughs> now, uh, what would you be doing if you weren't playing football right now? I'm not trying to be let's let's not let's not say I'm not saying you know you quit football now. Say yeah, no doubt. Football. Like, what would you I, be doing? I don't have an answer. Uh let's say I played two years, uh, I would definitely go into coaching. Um I have some things lined up that if I wanted to stop playing ball right now, I can go right into the collegiate level of coaching. So Okay. Um, oh, so you wouldn't you don't even like hit the old alma mater up in line. Well, that's a good question. Would you no, take I, I would go I would go straight to straight to collegiate ball. Just because just of the opportunity that I would have, and I know it's on the table, so um, that's kind of where I would start at. Do you think Do you think that's going to be the long term thing? I mean, once you're say say you play seven years, and after that, you're going to go right into coaching. Would you like to eventually be a yeah, college I mean, head coach or football it, it just, coaching? Or? I wouldn't say head coach, but I would definitely say in the coaching profession. I mean, um, coaching you know defensive backs or something like that. So doing what I always done. So um, that's kind of the road I would like to take. 
All right. Now how was uh, Aruba down there? What you do down there? How was I've never been to Aruba? Like, now, that was the experience. So we um my agency, uh we they took they took all the players that they have and we went down there, had a good time. Uh, had a banquet there as well. So it was a good experience overall, man. It was I never been to Aruba either, so it was kind of join some different stuff. It give you the Mexico feel, so as you were going to Cancun or Tulum or something. So, okay. Well, I mean, I'm assuming most of the Caribbean is just uh, pretty much yeah. the same. It, yeah, exactly. That's I say, same thing. That's kind of how I felt. Because we were just down. Me and my boy were just down the Virgin Islands over the summer. It was a blast. I loved it. Yeah. So secluded and all the. I like the more secluded spots because, like, I mean, I heard good things about Puerto Rico, but it's like everybody talks about Puerto Rico all the time. So it's like I don't want to go where it's so crowded. Yeah, I mean, it's worth yeah. a little bit of money. To right. get the, Get the privacy and all that. Well, uh, do you have anything, anything else to promote? And how can people get a hold of you? Uh, yeah. So I mean, my Instagram, Moss View. Uh, you know, uh, M O F F S uh, View underscore, and then you know my my Twitter. You know, uh, Javante underscore Moss is where people can get hold of me. Snapchat, my name. Uh, so I mean, just just really social media ways. I mean, I'm always on there. You can reach out. I, I see the messages. So it's not like, you know, I'm blind to everything. So, yeah. Good stuff. Well, thanks for Mr. Javante Moff for joining us. Appreciate it, my friend. Good best of luck in this season. I know uh, you're going to be on the Jets this year. I think we play one, one time this year maybe. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know if we come in there or what. So, that should yeah, be. But so, uh, best of luck except for one time playing us. And I uh, hope uh, he'll be have a good year, man, and uh, get some playing time and get stuff like that. And thanks for joining us, brother. I oh, know. Appreciate it, man. It's only you. All right. We'll talk to you guys later.